So I told you yesterday that we were going to learn some new forms, right? We have been comfortable with slope-intercept form for a while now. So I said, okay, time to introduce a new form to you. And that form was point-slope form, right? We learned about it yesterday. It was really nothing to it, just kind of putting things in the right spot. So the third form we're going to learn today is called standard form. And those are the only three that you're going to need to know. So this learning target is I can... So we're going back to graph, okay? This whole unit is uh, graphing. Linear equations in standard form now. Not slope-intercept, not point-slope. By finding or solving. Long one. X and Y. Intercepts. Okay. Give me a minute to write that. I can graph linear equations in standard form, but first I have to solve for something called the x and the y intercepts. So um, let's talk about x and y intercepts first. We already know what the y intercept is, right? The definition of the y-intercept is where the line crosses the y-axis at, right? So, for example, in the homework that you just did, the y-intercept was 2. The y-intercept was negative 4. Here it was 1. Here it was 3, right? Well, if there's a y-intercept, what makes you think there can't be an x-intercept, right? It's just the definition of that is where the line crosses the x-axis at. Here, if the x-intercept is 2. Here, the x-intercept is kind of off the table here, but it would probably be 7 or 8 maybe. Here, it's 2 and a half. Here, the x-intercept is negative 3. So, really, the x-intercept is not something that we normally use and work with. It's the y-intercept that we do mostly. So, um, I want you to put these, the definition of these intercepts x and y intercepts are where the line crosses each of the axes at. Okay, so if I were to you know, let's do this. If I were to graph this line, just do a quick little sketch there. And this was so this point right here is called just to kind of give you a visual we would call this the y-intercept and this one is the x-intercept right easy enough so now I'm gonna ask you for the names of these. By the names, I mean what ordered pair are those points? And then we're going to use this information. So this is negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So my question to you is this negative 6, 0, or 0, negative 6? Everybody gets confused with this. Audrey? Yes, it's 0 because from here, how many did I move left or right to get to this? None. So my horizontal movement is nothing. And if my horizontal movement from the axis or from the origin is nothing, then I'm going to be on that y axis. So this is 0, comma negative 6. Agreed? So now let's take a look at this one. If I'm at the origin, what was my horizontal movement? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I went 7 to the left which means my x-axis is negative 7, but how many did I move vertically? Up or down? None. So that means that's a 0. So what do you notice is in each of these points? A 0, right? So now here's what is kind of weird for you to get used to. If it's the y-intercept, your x-coordinate will be 0. And if it's the x-intercept, your y-coordinate will be 0. Did you hear that? It's kind of like backwards. I'll write that out a little bit for you, too. So if it's the x-intercept, 
then your y value is equal to zero, isn't it? Every single time. If it's on the x-axis, your y coordinate is zero. If it's on your y, then your x is equal to zero. That's just a different way of kind of writing that. Okay, does that make sense today for that? Okay, so if, and there's two ways to write this y-intercept. I don't want you to just write the y-intercept is 5 and the x-intercept is negative 2. Why do you think I don't want you writing that like that? Because what you know what you should be doing? When you see that, you should think what? Horizontal line at 5. Isn't that what you think? Your brain is trained to think that. So now I don't want you thinking, oh, that that's a horizontal line at 5. No, it's not. It's the y-intercept. So you're going to make an ordered pair out of that. So once you find your order or your y-intercept, you need to finish it by putting it as an ordered pair. So you're going to, in the y spot, put 5 and put 0 in the other. That's it. That's all you're, how you're going to do it. So then your x-intercept is not acceptable to leave it as x equals negative 2 because I'm picturing a vertical line at negative 2 when I see that. So that means that negative 2 comma 0. I had somebody very confused last hour, and what they did is after they found each of their intercepts, they made this an ordered pair. They made this negative 2 comma 5. No. Each of these is a separate point, right? You don't make this one point. Your x value is not negative 2, and your y value is not 5. It's 0, 5, negative 2, 0. Got it? So let's go back and reread the learning target. It says, I can graph linear equations... We haven't talked about standard form yet, but do you know what x and y-intercepts are? So if I gave you the x and the y-intercept, could you graph something? Yeah, piece of cake. That's what I'm going to ask you to do on the whole first page. And I don't really like this, so maybe what I'm going to have you do in addition to this is take that x-intercept and make it an ordered pair and write, because you do need practice doing that. So all you're going to do is go to the x-axis at negative 3, the y-axis at negative 1, and there's your two points, right? All you need is two points to graph a line. So here's what's kind of cool about today. Did I say, is the word slope anywhere on this page? Do you need to know slope? No. I mean, you could find it after you graph it, right? It's negative one-third. But I don't need to. I don't even ask you about that on learning target six. All I'm doing is giving you the x and the y intercepts or giving you an equation in standard form to solve it. So are you good so far? So that's the first page. Then when you get to the second page, I'm not going to give you the x and the y-intercept. I'm going to give you an equation that looks like that. And we've seen equations that look like that before, right? Okay, so now let's talk about, now that you know what intercepts are, let's do standard form. So we know y equals mx plus b is slope-intercept. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 is point slope. So here's standard. AX plus BY equals C. And in that equation, the X and the Y are what stay, right? There's always that X and Y that are always in that equation, regardless of what form. It's the A, the B, and the C that we're going to kind of change and make different numbers. So if I were to say... Um, 2x plus um, 6y equals 24, then that is an example of an equation written in standard form. Now, if I were to say to you, graph that line, what would you do? Like, and and I, before you answer that, I want you to think about this. What you need to know is that it, it's called a unit because all of these different learning targets are related. So even though we're learning learning target six, you need skills from four and three and two and so on, right? So there's going to be a problem in your homework where somebody's going to get stuck because they're thinking about it in terms of how to solve it with learning target six. But there's an easy solution. You know what I mean? I need them all to start coming together. So... If I asked you to graph that as of today, knowing what you know, how would you? What's the easiest form to graph in? Slope-intercept, right? So what would you do? 
Would you solve that for why? Probably. As your teacher, knowing what I taught you so far, you probably would solve it for y. You would find the y-intercept. So let's just do that real quick. So you know what to do. You would subtract 2x. That would get you 6y equals negative 2x plus 24. You would divide by 6. And y would equal negative 1 third, not 3, x plus 4. Right? And then you would... Say, okay, I'm going to go to plus 4, just like you did on your review, and then I'm going to go down 1 over 3. Ta-da, I just graphed it. Woohoo! Okay, what if I were to tell you you're not allowed to do that today? You have to keep it in standard form. You can't turn it into slope-intercept form. And as of right now, you're like, I wouldn't know what to do. Well, that's okay, because that's what learning target 6 is. So I'm going to teach you what to do. Keeping it in standard form. It's pretty easy. I think you'll like it. Okay, so um, let's talk about how to. So we're gonna how to solve for the x and y intercepts. Piece cake. Ready? So in order to do this, you kind of need to remember something I told about seven or eight minutes ago that the x intercept has a y value of 0 every time, right? And that the y-intercept has an x value of 0 every time. Don't get confused. x-intercept y is 0. y-intercept x is 0. So knowing that, let's take this equation, 2x plus 6y equals 24, and let's set up and solve two separate things. Let's solve and find the x-intercept. Let's solve and find the y. So I'm going to show you kind of like a long way to do it. And then I want you to kind of be watching to see if there's a way shorter way to do it because I know that you'll find it and I'll let you do it if you can find it. So I want to take this y right here and make it zero. So that means I'm going to say 2x plus 6 times zero. Let me get my red pen. I just made y equal to 0, equals 24, right? So now when I solve that, 6 times 0 is 0. So it's kind of like that's just not there anymore, right? So what am I left with? And then if 2 times what number is 24, then that number is 12, right? So, be careful. Don't stop here because right now what I'm looking at is a vertical line at 12. That's not what I want. I want the x-intercept to be 12, so what should I do? How should I finish it off? Make the x 12, 0. So this is actually a point, not a vertical line. This is 12, 0. Easy, right? So I know that my x-intercept is 12, 0. Let's do the same thing for y. So to find the y-intercept, this time I make x equal to 0. So let's do 2 times x, and x is 0 this time. And some people are like, I get confused on which one I'm solving for. Well, guess what? If you make x 0, what's the only variable left in your equation? y. So it's kind of like you have no choice. You are solving for y because it's the only one left. So 6 times what number is 24? Y is 4, but that's a horizontal line at 4. Make it into an ordered pair. Make your Y value 4 and make the other one 0. Got it? So now when I go to sketch this, I'm going to do what? Now, it's helpful to have this still written because sometimes people still mix these up and plot them wrong, don't they? Like this is... 12 comma 0, it should be over here. Do you think sometimes people would put it up here? Yeah, if you're going by this. So I'm going to, when I, I keep these, but when I go to plot it, I look at these. I say to myself, go to the x-axis at 12. Go to y-axis at 4. There's your two points. I don't know anything about slope. I'm just going to graph it with my x and my y intercepts. Got it? Okay, does that make sense? Anybody kind of see a shorter cut to this? 
I mean, there's not a ton of it. I'll show you that this step is kind of unnecessary. Like, you don't have to do. Because, watch this. Are you ready? I'll show you. If I make x 0, 2 times 0 is 0, that disappeared. So I literally say, take your finger and cover up the 2x. What equation do you see? 6y equals 24. y equals 4. Take your y and cover it up. What equation do you see? 2x equals 24. x equals 12. Boom. Right? Fast? So that's kind of going to be the nice shortcut that you'll use um, you know, when it, when it comes to that. But for today, I do want you um, showing at least these two equations. So let's talk about this one. Let's look at um, 3x minus 5y equals 30. Okay. So shortcut method is what? Cover up that x, and what is that? Negative 5y equals 30 is going to be one of your equations. And what's the other one? 3x equals 30. So 3x equals 30. Negative 5y equals 30. Because what I did is make x equal to 0 and y equal to 0. Okay, not done though. Make your ordered pairs and then you're done. If x is 10, y is 0. If y is negative 5, x is 0. Got it? Graph it. Go to the x-axis at 10. Go to the y-axis at negative 5. Oh, where am I at? Sorry. I'm looking. Thank you. What's that? Yeah. What's that? Oh, my God. You asked. Okay. So you asked, where am I at? And she said, why? And you said, what? Oh, okay, so I got gotcha. you. I was thinking, you you meant W-H-Y or I meant that. Okay, there you go. Sorry, I had five on my mind from over here. Okay, so this is negative six. Woo there we go. Okay, so there's your two points. Thank you for keeping me on my toes. And there's your line. Nothing about slope. You just use, you find your intercepts, you plot them, and you're good. Okay? Um, try... Try this one. Actually, you know what? You may. I'll just show you one more example. Um, and this may happen. 3x plus y equals 5. Okay? Doesn't look fun at all. First of all, when I cover the x up, y doesn't have a coefficient. So it's like, ooh, bonus. I don't have to do anything. What is my y-intercept? 5, right? So your y-intercept is 5, which is 0, comma 5. Cover y up, and you get 3x equals 5. And for the first time, it's not going to go evenly. Wow, well, yeah, this is advanced algebra. So what? It's a mixed number. If I were to ask you if you would rather graph 1 and 2 thirds or 5 thirds, what would you rather graph? Really? <laughs> like if I were to graph 1 and 2 thirds, comma, 0, I would rather graph this because otherwise you'd be like one third, two thirds, three thirds, four thirds, five thirds. I would rather graph one and two thirds, right? So here's the deal with intercepts that are not whole numbers. You are dealing with some teeny tiny little, uh, like a couple millimeters here. And if you have a big fat pencil, you make a big old blob and it looks like it could take up the whole space, right? I am not going to get upset with you because it should be a little bit over. If you can get it between the right two whole numbers, then that's good enough for me. So I do realize, like, as long as you have it somewhere between 1 and 2, you're going to get your credit for it. Um, and then 0, comma 5 is up here. So know that it's not always going to go negative or go evenly. And know that they may have a coefficient. Watch. Some of you are still getting tricked up on this. What if I make it 3x minus y equals 5? What if I change that plus to a minus? That, 
That means that negative y equals 5. Don't tell me that the y-intercept is 5, because y does not equal 5. The opposite of y equals 5. What do you have to do? Divide by negative 1. So if negative y equals positive 5, then positive y equals negative 5. Don't forget, when your coefficient just has a negative, you have to be really careful of that. Okay? Think you got it? That's all there is to it.